Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at how to set up a camera trap. Camera traps are awesome tools for recording, uh, especially mammals. Um, so it's like a little, a little spy in the bush that you can use to record any, any kind of um, critters roaming around on your property or in a nature reserve or wherever you choose. So if you enjoy wildlife documentaries or scientific articles, you've probably seen still photos or video taken by camera traps. Remote cameras have been used for years by scientists studying or documenting wildlife numbers and behavior, especially in difficult terrain, where it's not often that easy to just go out in the field and go take photos yourself. So it's easy to go, you know, put up a camera trap there and leave it for months or however long, and then just retrieve your, your photos after a while. And a camera trap is just like an ordinary digital camera, except that it does not have a button to press to take the photo. Instead, it uses, um, it's triggered by movement or heat from any, any animals that might be passing by. So one of the projects in the virtual museum that especially benefits from camera trap photos is Mammal Map, the Atlas of African Mammals. And, and you might think, you know, mammals being quite, uh, it's usually the most popular um, taxa out there for people to study or, or you know, uh, take a look at in terms of conservation. You would think that surely we, we know the distribution of Africa's mammals. Um, these are the flags, uh, flagship species um, in many cases, especially for tourism. But sadly, the answer is no. A lot of the distributions uh, are changing quite quickly because of human population growth, climate change, urban expansion, habitat destruction, things like that. Um, and, and oftentimes the distribution maps that we have in current field guides are out of date and we desperately need to update these distribution maps in order for us to successfully protect Africa's amazing mammals. So developing the 21st century distribution maps is filling, filling a critical gap in conservation needs and this is what Mammal Map is doing. And camera traps can play a great role in helping us to map Africa's mammals. So just some basic camera trap anatomy. This picture just shows you uh, quite nicely what a camera trap, what a basic camera trap look like, looks like and what all the various buttons and sensors and what they are. So usually at the top you have the flash emitters for, you know, when it's taking photos um, at night. It's got the movement sensor and then the little camera lens. And if you open it up, there's your space where you put in your batteries. Um, some camera traps take, you can use re rechargeable batteries. Um, and then, yeah, you've got your basic settings there where you can, you can switch it like to video mode or just photo mode, set the sensitivity of the sensor, um, the gap between when it should take photos and all sorts of things like that. Um, so yeah, camera traps are great fun. Um, it's proved very effective um, to find find out what elusive kind of animals are, are walking around uh, in your backyard or in a protected area or, or even an urban environment, any urban environment, uh, especially your nocturnal animals like, like cats. Uh, yeah, camera traps are a great way of finding out what's what's out there. Uh, the very, it's very important to pick the right site for your camera trap. Um, it helps to be quite sure that an animal will pass by the camera at some stage. So well-used game paths are a good are is a good place to start. Um, hiking trails, quiet jeep tracks, dry water courses are often used by by animals. Um, at the bottom of ravines. So these are all good places to set up your camera trap. For close shots, like on game paths 
or watering holes. Um, it's good to set the camera up not higher than waist height, and if you're specifically trying to capture smaller mammals, then lower down is even better. So, yeah. um, if you are in an area where there's elephants or hyenas or any other large predators, it's very important to make sure that you keep the, the camera trap free of any unusual odors or anything like that. So it's a good idea to like wash your hands and everything before you um, set up the camera trap and don't like contaminate the area with any like food or funny smells because this can often lead to especially elephants <laughs> inspecting your camera and most probably walking off with it. <laughs> Ahinas are also well known for for biting off camera traps. <laughs> and taking them off and to never be uh, found again. I know I've lost a camera trap that way for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so just keep things clean around the camera trap site. Another important factor to keep in mind is the direction of the sun. So where's the sun setting or rising? Um, occasionally when a subject triggers the camera, when it's pointed towards the sun, um, as the sun is rising or setting, this can um, wash out your picture completely. So you'll just get this whitewashed photo and, and you won't know what it was that triggered the camera. So yeah, just something to be aware of, of, of where the sun is moving during the day where you have your camera track. Um, this is just a nice picture giving you a nice example of camera trap placements. So what we talked about, you know, on game paths, and how you set up the camera in terms of do you want a frontal view of the, the animal walking directly towards the camera or do you want side on views um, and just in terms of placement on the tree higher up or lower up for smaller animals and things like that. So we would love to see your camera trap photos in Mammal Map and the place to upload your photos is of course the virtual museum. The URL is displayed on the screen, but I'll also post the link to the Virtual Museum website below this video. And also, for any other cool updates from us here at the BDI, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.